With bold designs that exude class, Maryland-based Goodwood founder David Frisch instills a little bit of East Coast flavor into each of his putters. Every Goodwood flat stick features the latest technology wrapped in a stylish yet traditional exterior. To ensure the feel and feedback produced by his putters remains exceptional, Frisch utilizes minimal face milling and avoids plated finishes. That rare combination of innovation and minimalism define Goodwood, a brand that will only continue to grow in the years to come. And Larry and I are lucky enough to be joined by David Frisch today. David, how are you doing? I'm good, yourself? I think we're doing well, Larry. Yeah, not too bad. You know, it's, it's a little chilly here, and you said it's a little chilly there, so. A little chilly. Yeah, you know, not quite golf weather. Not quite. Summer's around the corner, though. Exactly. Perfect. Well, David, we want to get into a lot of, of kind of how you started in, in the business and, and a lot of your past, but I want to start with kind of one kind of philosophical question. I think the process of creating a golf club, it's a complex one, and I think it requires kind of the, both the right and the left brain. You know, you have to be a bit of an engineer, a bit of an artist. Kind of between those two, if you really had to pin yourself down, would you say you kind of fall more on the artistic side or kind of the engineer side? Um, honestly, uh my understanding of the engineering may be a bit limited compared to uh, you know a lot of the big companies out there with the huge R and D budgets and everything and really exploring different um, crews and you know insert technology. Um, I, I really take pride in the artistic side of of my putters um, and just really trying to achieve good proportions. You know something that somebody's comfortable looking down at. Um, and, and trying to keep it as simple as possible. I, I really try and stick with a, a less is more approach when I design my putters. Yeah, I would agree with that. I mean, you know, we met a couple of years ago in our Maryland store and, uh, you know, I saw your putters and, you know, speaking of minimalist, the one I've been putting with for the last couple of years, it, you know, it's about as it's about as low tech as it gets, but you know, reminded me of an old Spalding HBA putter, and, and and it just had the feel, and you know, I, I just love sitting and talking with you for a couple hours and just understanding what you want to do, where you wanted to go, and and I think it just fits perfectly, especially with with our new initiative here at Second Swing called Handmade Sticks, thus the new hat today. Um, you know that it, it really fits into where where we want to be and and I, I think there's a there's a real um, movement in golf right now to kind of get to the place where you've got these beautiful products and you know we kind of we kind of coined the phrase made to be played that night uh, a couple years ago and I, I totally agree and that's what you do sure. yeah I, I you know there, there are a lot of a lot of options out there these days and a lot of makers popping up and um and my whole goal was to make something that could be customized but also purchased at a price point where you're not afraid to play with it you know it, it's not something to be hung on a wall or collected now i don't i'm not going to argue if somebody wants to <laughs> from me and start collecting them, but, but really the goal is to, to have them in people's bags and actually have them yeah, absolutely. And I think that, you know, you, you've you really done that for us. You know, we've been selling the putters for a couple of years. We, we've we gone into starting to sell some more. You've done some unique designs for us for, for handmade sticks. And and I think you're really kind of getting the essence of, uh, you know, a, a, a young and upcoming putter, putter maker. Yeah, and exactly. I mean, I think we've touched a little bit on kind of where you are now, David, but I'm curious to kind of kind of turn back the uh, the history books a little bit. What was kind of the moment that really, really energized you and got you into the kind of this business? I mean, you've, you've turned Goodwood into uh, really one of the great kind of upstart golf brands um, in the business, but were you were you sketching putter designs on kids menus with crayons when you were a kid? What was kind of the what was kind of the genesis of your of your Goodwood journey? No, so I, I was um, a PGA assistant for about seven years um, at a country club here in Maryland. Um, got out of the business. Um, you know, when you when you work at a country club, you meet some meet some people that own their own businesses and work in all kinds of different industries. Um, ended up working um, a couple different places, but but really, I ended up um, working as a a buyer for a clean shop here in Baltimore. Um, and 
so I sourced all of their materials, really learned about the machining process. But previous to that, I, I would, I loved Camerons, um, Pokey Wedges. I, I would, anytime I could find an old one that was maybe a little beat up, I'd love to buy it and refinish it and, and just try different things with it. Um, so combine that with, with learning more about the machining processes and the different materials um, really took some of the artistic ability that I had always had since I was a kid. Um, and I, th I, think, I really think it started when I wanted to buy a 009, but that wasn't really a financially responsible <laughs> thing for me to do. Um, so, you know, I, I looked at it and saw some things that I would want to change in it um, and started off with a few different models, but, but really that, that was the one that, that I think really turned me on to to making my own putters and when I actually sold a few, um, business picked up some and here we are today. Yeah, and you know, that's that's a great story because I kind of started the same way back in the early 70s, <laughs> ouch. Um, you know, wanted to buy a, you know, wanted to buy then, you know, a 693 McGregor driver was, was the hot thing and wanted and, and couldn't afford to pay for a good one found one in a barrel and refinished it and all of a sudden, you know, played it for a long time. So, you know, very similar stories, very similar starts. And, and I think that's where, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the really good club guys start, you know, is they start with this desire that, Hey, you know, I, I want to do something, but I don't necessarily maybe can start with all the engineering and everything. And I'm going to, I'm going to kind of figure it out on my own. And I think that's a, I think that's a great way to go. And I think you'll find out in the, you know, in our handmade stick stories, there's going to be a lot of this. Right. Yeah. yeah there, there was a lot of trial and error to get to this point. I, you know, I, I've had several different designs made that, you know, I wasn't quite happy with. I didn't like the way they looked or I didn't like the way they sounded um, and never gotten sold. They're sitting in a box around here somewhere. <laughs> so I'm pretty picky about what I actually choose to, to release to people. Um, but right now I'm, I'm pretty happy with all the different designs that I have. Um, and I think the, the new ones, like the one that you have there, um, kind of our factory production, I, I think that's, uh, I'm really excited about that. Um, I love the hand finished and hand stamp stuff, but I also do think there is a market for for a little bit more of a factory finished engraved look. Um, keep it clean and you know have a few different options that are on the shelves next to the hand finished stuff. Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, I think as a I think as a putter maker, you have to kind of look at all the all the sides of the business, and you know, there's a lot of hand milled hand done putters that you know quite frankly are getting very expensive yep. Yep. but we also i think that i think that you can get quality product and something that you can make and sell to our customers that's not you know hey you don't have to worry about taking out a mortgage payment right. to right. to to do it and you know so i think you're you really hit the bill between hey giving us the opportunity here at at handmade sticks to to have some different price points yep. and and really introduce people to who you know you know I think you're one of the up and comers and you know when when I'm retired sitting around doing nothing you know I go hey I knew that guy when so um, you know that's kind of that's kind of the hope for me and and the hope for us here at handmade sticks is really to um, to to showcase you let you use your talent and you know make some things you know on a limited basis that hey you know try them out people if people like them people don't like them but you know right now everything that you've you've sent to us in in the past everybody likes so you know i i think i think this is going to be a perfect example and the people i've shown this putter to already have gone they've gone crazy over it so they're ready they're certainly ready to buy it awesome yeah, I, I think that, that you know, they're, they're, like you mentioned, different different putter makers and different methods, whether whether it's hand-milled or, or, you know, even 3D printed stuff's out there now. Right. Um, but I, you know, and, and when I was trying to, you know, find my place in the market, I, I really think that 
you can go too overboard with the amount of stamping options and, and the laser engraving and, and all the different milling to, to where maybe becomes a bit gaudy. I don't know. But then, <laughs> but then on the other end, you have some stuff that's very simplified and and just kind of fits in and, and looks like everything else. Um, I take a lot of pride in the small little details in mind while they might right. not be flashy. Um, just little things like like the chamfer top line on the G7 that I have or the smooth flange where it doesn't have the step. Um, just little things that you might be able to look at and say, oh, I know what brand that is right away, even though it's that standard answer design that everybody's familiar with. Yeah, and that's, a, that's actually something I wanted to ask you about, David, because we've talked a little bit about kind of your influences uh, kind of in your formative years, but now I'm talking about your kind of your design philosophy today, it seems like the Goodwood brand is really, it's kind of a mix of, you know, that traditional kind of general shaping, yet there's that kind of modern edge and technology. Sure. How do you kind of infuse kind of the past and present and create something that's that's original, yet kind of speaks to uh, kind of the putter designs that, that you know people love? Right. Um, you know, I, I follow a lot of different makers online. Um, on Instagram and social media and, and look at what they're producing. Um, and I, there are certainly influences, um, like Byron Morgan. I, I think my stuff is, is very similar to, to what he made. Um, I love some of the TP Mill stuff. It's, it's really clean and simplistic. Um, so I, I really think it, it's just taking some of those shapes and, and dressing them up a little bit more with some of the angles, um, whether it be on the shoulders or the way the bumpers are sitting. Um, and for example, I mean, this is, this is the one that Larry has in front of him there. Um, a simple thing is a, a lot of people will take these, you know, the shoulders here, they'll be parallel with the face and the trail edge. Something that I wanted to do is just angle them in a little bit. That just makes it just a little bit different, something different to look down at. Uh, double lines that are kind of floating and don't go all the way to the trail edge. It's just little changes like that that I really think um, I really think some people miss the mark on, and, and then other people go a little bit overboard. So I try and find a happy medium there um, to just make small changes but keep those traditional shapes. Well, you know, one of the things that, that I've always seen in your putters is I never see anything that looks out of place, you right. know, and, and yeah. I kind of, ha having having designed golf clubs and built golf clubs for some of the best players in the world, I mean, that's what I always look into is, is having a club that when they put it down, there's nothing that's going to draw their eye that right. looks out of place. And that's one of the things that when I first met you and I looked at your putters, you know, I always look. For, I always look when I see find something new. I always look for what's wrong, and that's just because for so many years I've you know worked at so many companies that you're all constantly kind of pulling something apart and, and making sure that it's as perfect as it gets. So I always look for. I always look for the mistakes first. And and one of the things that I love about your putters is, you know you don't see any, you know, you might do it a little differently, but there's nothing there that when you, that you put one of your putters down that boy, it's, it's going to draw my attention that it, that it looks out of place. Right. And, and that's what I think is really cool. And I think that's why you have such a, such a gift and such an ability to, to really become, you know, one of the, one of the best known putter makers over the, you know, coming up now because they are they're they're simply elegant i right. guess might be the might be the term to use for it um so yeah because i've i've seen a lot of bad stuff hey i've designed i've designed a fair amount of bad stuff in my life all right david so you mentioned kind of a couple of clubs that sort of influenced you in the past I'm, it's interesting because i think golf is such a there's such a heritage there's a lineage of, of clubs that influence you know, past generations, and then they influence now the next generation, and it kind of keeps going on. Are there really specific? I think let's maybe we'll zero in on putters specifically. Are there a couple putters throughout history that really stand out to you as particularly important or beautiful, or kind of uh, that have kind of influenced your style? Um, like many people, the answer shape. Yeah, mean, that, that's something that pretty much every company. Does yeah. <laughs> Other than that, um, I don't know. That, 
that's pretty much what I've always putted with, and I, yeah. I mean, that's what I use. I use a smooth based carbon G7 that I made for myself, and it is pretty simple and plain. It's got a gun blue, you know, finish on it. It's a little, a little rusty, and and it's just comfortable. It, it feels like something I've always used. I look down at it, and even if I, it was brand new, it looks like something that I've had for for a while, and, and that's what I really like about it. Is it's there's a comfort there with it when I look down at it. Yeah, and you you mentioned you mentioned finishes. Um, you know, one of the things that people ask all the time is finishes, and you know, I've been through that with with my work at Wilson and in Titleist, and finishes are all kind always kind of a, a a scary thing when you put a new finish on a putter. So, and we've talked a lot about it. So, you know, just talk a little bit kind of about what you're what you're thinking and some of the finishes you put on, and maybe some of the new things you're investigating. Sure, so so I offer two different types of steel. It would be the stainless steel or the carbon steel. Um, stainless steel, really the only thing that I offer is a glass bead glass finish, so that's your typical right. satin yep. look. Um, and, and I think that's great for people who maybe live in an area where it rains a lot or, or they want a clean putter that they don't have to worry about maintaining. Right. Um, I like those, but I'm, I'm a little partial to the carbon steel. Um, yep. It's it will rust, but it's also a softer steel. Um, it's it's easier to work with. The stamps come out a little bit better, I think. Yep. Um, and I and I just think the fact that it will rust in patina gives a little bit of character. Um, so the finishes I do with that would, would either be a raw finish. Um, I know raw wedges are are popular yep. these yep. days. People people like the look of that. Um, I do a gun blue finish, so the same kind of thing that you would see on a gun barrel. So it starts off as, as a blue black, but over time it'll fade to a to a brown black, and it'll get a nice deep patina with it. Um, and then I do a, a heat treat, and then dip it in oil, and that's more of a black finish. And you might get a little bit of an oil slick with it. Um, but really, the different kind of things that you know you can do with with carbon steel. Um, I think that that makes butter stand out a little bit. There are a lot of things with PVD finishes, you know, because you know as their blue putters yeah, yeah. right now, um, but also typical black or, or even satin, and some people are doing rainbow finishes. <laughs> I don't necessarily think that really fits in with my <laughs> style, um, but but I am looking at at the PVD the black finish for the stainless option, so so you can still have a dark butter um, that you don't have to make. Right. Yeah. That, you know, and finishes, like you said, finishes are kind of the eye of the beholder. I mean, I, I have two sets of irons that I switch in between and, you know, ping I 59s with their beautiful finish. And I've got a set of sub 70s that are raw finish. And, yep. you know, my wife, sometimes I'm going out to play. She goes, what are you going to use those old clubs for? <laughs> well, you know, I'm, I, I kind of like that, especially having done a lot of prototyping over the years with with Wilson and Titleist. You know, we never put a finish on it. We just did it, you know, did some prototypes. You take it out. And by the time, you know, you spend a couple months working with tour players, it's got that patina and everybody's yeah. looking and going, hey, can you make it that way? Uh, right. But, you know, it is. It's kind of the eye of the beholder. And it's, you know, it's kind of goes along with that, you know, your philosophy of kind of made to be played and just uh, having a golf club in your hand that, hey, I like the way this looks. You know, yeah. there's there's the people that, you know, you, if you watch any car shows, you, you see people that have these beautiful paint jobs with eight layers. And then you got the ones that clear coat the rusty truck and think it's the coolest right. thing in the world. I'm actually the rusty truck guy, so you know, yeah. So no, that's that's the that's a really cool thing that yeah. you know is, is we've talked over the years that I really I really like about you because you you remind me a lot about me earlier in my career that you know you're kind of really wanting to be um, you've got imagination and you're curious and you want to just keep yeah. doing all these things and and just find out what what how i can make a better putter you know and that's uh I, I, that's very admirable so uh that's why we love working with you well and, and larry you brought up prototypes david that was a question kind of i had for you was when you're when you are creating a new putter or or, or creating a new design what is the moment of the process which i'm sure is a long and difficult one 
Which is the moment that you find the most rewarding? Is it kind of in the initial stage when you kind of crack a new idea? Is it when you finally are just looking at the finished product? What is the moment that you think is the most satisfying for you as a, as a putter maker? Um, there are a few different, few different times, you know, when, I, when I'm designing, you know, the cat fly when it finally looks right and I'm like, all right, I'm, I'm really happy with that. Um, that. That's kind of the first, you know, moment of excitement for me is when I finally nail it down and I can look at it from all angles and I'm happy with it. And then I really think the the next one is, you know, when, when the heads are, are finished machining and I get one in, you know, I, I probably haven't even finished it yet. It's still in a raw stage, but I'll put a shaft in it and I'll roll some putts here in my garage on the mat that I have. And if it sounds good and it feels good, that that's really the moment where I'm, I'm happy with it and I'm, and I'm ready to actually release it out, you know, to people and start finishing them. Um, like I said, I, I've had some where I'm really happy with the way they look and I put them down and it, and it makes a bad sound or it doesn't feel good. But that's a little bit of a disappointment, but um, I, I think you have to have something that looks good and feels good. It has to, it has to catch people's eye, but also has to be functional at the same time. Right. Yeah, absolutely, and I think you know your 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 learning is 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 all designers learn that you know sometimes you learn more from your mistakes than you do from your successes. You know, you really you, you look at something and you go, man, I thought this was going to be the greatest putter ever, and all of a sudden it's like, gosh, it really doesn't look that good and it really doesn't feel that good. But how do I do it? And you know that's. That's the cool part of being able to design products and, and you know, that's kind of the whole idea of handmade sticks is giving, giving craftsmen like you the ability to really put out some great product, but also, you know, try something a little different. You know, we're, we're willing to work with you and go, hey, you know what, we're going to take a half a dozen of these and we're going to see what people think. And that's, uh, you know, hey. I remember years and years ago when Karsten came out with the answer. I'm old enough. I'm old enough to be around when when that happened, and people looked at it and went, "Wow, you know, why am I why am I going to have this?" And well, you know, I got my first answer in 1974 when I was a freshman in high school. I still have that putter to the day. And you look at it, you look at all the people, and, and you know, in my in my growing up was the 8802 putter. Yep. Everybody wanted to make a heel shafted flange blade and and make it look really good. And you know, now in this generation, it's kind of the answer putter. And sure. you look at it, and you look at it compared to the things that you make for us, and in Scotty's putters, and it, you know, you've all put your spin on something that's really, really considered a standard in golf. Yep. You know, arguably, there's very few clubs that you would consider a standard in golf, and that's what I think makes it really cool, and you know, makes us uh, every time every time you say you're going to ship us something gets us excited to see what's coming out because I have to tell you when you first started with this and I'm not I'm not the biggest fan of why I pulled this out and went holy cow this looks way better this looks way better than the pictures you know you sent me a bunch of pictures Michael and I saw kind of the process going on but when you pull that head cover off and you look at it and that's kind of why when you know I did the opening for our Scottsdale store that's what handmade sticks is all about, is pulling that yeah. head cover off. That wow moment. That wow moment and going, wow, I'm really happy with this. And I hope it I hope it plays as good as it looks. And you know what? Your putters do. So that's really cool. Yep. And, and going back to, to the answer style, uh, I mean, there are a lot of, you get on some message boards online and, and people will, will say, all anybody does is make a new answer. Every right. Day. Uh, they make their own version of the answer and, and that is the truth but also they're the main sellers so, so that's why everybody makes them but at this point i'm really happy with that shape um and so now i think i'm at a point where i can start exploring like that wide blade and, and some right. different options to really try some new models out now that now that i really feel like i've nailed down the g7 shape that i have i don't see any changes I, it's gone through some different changes sure. and different models um, to get to this point, but really happy with the details. And now, I'm, like I said, I'm excited to, to really try some new and different shapes. Yeah, 
and we're excited too. You, David, you've been very generous with your time. We'll, we'll let you out of here with one last question. Goodwood is really, as we mentioned, kind of a company on the rise. What do you, in just you know, maybe a minute or two, where do you, what's the horizon? What, what do you see for the future of kind of the Goodwood brand? Um, like, I, like I just mentioned, you know, exploring some new, new shapes and new designs. Um, uh, I'm really excited to, to try some different things, you know, to, to kind of complement the putters. Learning more about the game is something that I've always been interested in. I've got a great local um, teaching pro friend of mine that I've made several putters for and, and used, gotten on Sam Lab with many of, of my putters. Um, looked at some different things, so, so I'm excited to, to learn more about how different players might react to different shapes um, and maybe look into some training aids in the future, some simple things. But I, I don't want Goodwood to just be, you know, a, a putter maker that you go to to have your kids initials stamped on it and, right. and that's all fine and good and I'm happy to do that but I, I do want I do want the business to be you know for players who want to improve as well um, and, and I want to help people with that so like I said training aids learning more about the game um, about the putting stroke um, really helping people be better putters not just give them you know, a cool product that they can show to their friends also. Absolutely. I think that's a really kind of exciting vision. That's one that one of the reasons we're so excited to kind of, to kind of have you as a part of the Handmade Sticks family. And uh, I think I speak for both of us when I say that uh, we can't wait to see what happens in the future uh, for Goodwood and uh, for yourself, David. Um, so with that, Larry, I think... Uh, uh, you know, I, I can't think of a better guy to, to start off our, our video series and it, with handmade sticks. Um, I, I've been happy. You know, we've we've known each other for a couple of years. It's a great product to custom fit. People come in. We do fittings. Your putter is bendable. We, we do all the things that with our Quintech technology. So, um you know, this is kind of a marriage, marriage made in heaven for us. So, uh, you know, we look forward to doing more great things. And, and you know, thanks for thanks for being guest number one. No, thank you. Thank you for, you know, you know, taking a chance on me and promoting my product. And, and, and I think it's a, like you said, it's, it's a good a good relationship that we have. And I'm excited for, for the future. Perfect. Couldn't agree more, David. Well, with that, we thank David Frisch for joining us, and to you at home, thanks for watching.